My name is Daniel. I am the high confessor of this YouTube channel. I have personally edited and created all of the content on it, with of course the help of my good friends. I've been doing this for about two years. Why? I don't know. All I know is that I hit record sometimes, and by god, I must edit. Most of the content on this channel is gameplay with me and my friend Terrence. I'll give you the quick lore on him. One day, the Abandu tribe abandoned him on the high school bus. I found and nurtured him back to health. He has been a loyal companion since, and one of the channel's greatest assets. Don't you run from me! Don't you dare run from me, boy! I will teach you a lesson! I will send you to Jesus! Speaking of channel, I wanted to do something different today. Something no one on YouTube has done before. Talk about X game and make X amount of jokes. The game in question has a steep price and has a surprising lack of vampires. And a very unsurprising, overwhelmingly positive review rating on Steam. Today, I'm going to be talking about Vampire Survivors, a bullet hell roguelike genocide simulator where you are the bullet hell and the genocider. If you play your cards right, you can go from this. All the way to this. And it feels pretty damn good. Until this happens. But we'll talk about that later. The creator of this game, Poncol, or Luca, has a pretty awesome website. Also on it, you can actually find a demo of Vampire Survivors. So, if you're not sure about paying the whole $2.99 for the masterpiece that the game is, you can play the Impoverished Edition with 20% less floor chicken. The story is very in-depth, rich, and goes as follows. There exist tales that don't exist. The year is 2021, rural Italy. There lived an evil person named Bisconte Traculo, whose evil's magic created a bad world filled with famine and suffering. It's now up to the members of the Bel Paese family to end his reign of terror and bring good food to the table. But to sum it up, look for vampire, eat floor chicken. Looking at the enemies, the themes of the levels, and the fact that one of the starting characters starts using a whip, we can see that the Castlevania series shamelessly copy and pasted all of the world building elements from vampire survivors. Thankfully, Vampire Survivors is still getting updates, unlike Castlevania Lords of Edge 2. But let's talk about gameplay. Your first game will look like this, and you will probably realize you can't change the direction you swing your weapon, and that the music is absolutely banging. You don't actually even need to press anything to attack, all you need to worry about is moving. Whip can only swing left and right, leaving you very vulnerable to the top and bottom, but it makes up for its ability to kill multiple enemies in one swing, killing enough enemies to get those sweet levels, which will be the difference between going far and going to the hospital. Is that the Grim Reaper? Who am I kidding? You'll be paying funeral costs after a tangle with the Red Death, which he appears after 30 minutes to personally put in a stop to your shenanigans. That's actually a good thing though. That means you completed the level. Play well enough and your reward is death. Very based vampire survivors. But how the hell are you meant to last that long when you can barely go 10 minutes on the first stage? Well, I'll tell you. You're gonna have a lot of short runs at first because this game has a lot of unlockables and a lot of content. So each run you want to unlock as many items and weapons as you can so you can build up your arsenal of doom. I'd go to the main menu and look at the unlockables. It'll tell you what you need to do for each item or weapon. Even with the roguelike mechanics, you'll always be able to get your hands on something useful. And if you know what you're doing, you can snowball pretty fast. And unlocking new item nets you gold most of the time, which directly enhances your starting abilities. Out of them, the most important ones are experience gain and magnet. Always have that thing on you, homie. Experience is life. The 
a solid strategy is trying to level up and evolve only two weapons at first. A lot of weak weapons won't do you much good and the game is more likely to give you the same weapon if you already have it so it supports this playstyle. Weapons are good, high level weapons are better, but how do you go even further beyond? Well, that means it's time to evolve and you won't be to level without doing it. So there's two kinds of items you can find either by leveling up or cracking open chests. The latter is critical to this process. There are weapons which, well, are weapons, and there's items that provide passive buffs. Some of these pair well together, so well in fact, you get a new weapon altogether. This requires three things. The weapon must be maxed out. You must have the corresponding item, which evolves the weapon and you must open a chest which is a reward for defeating bosses if done correctly when you open the chest your evolved weapon will be waiting for you nothing beats getting your hands on one for the first time truly a life-changing experience there are a total of 19 weapons to evolve and hopefully there'll be many more and maybe we'll get some levels with actual walls in them. Speaking of levels, there's an interesting bonus level. You see, Bo was always a hard worker, clearing the back roads of vegetation so others could traverse them easily. One day, no matter how much he cut and cleared, there was always just more and more. Determined he forged on until the plants turned a sinister red in a panic. He ran through the crimson forest, slaying all the vegetation in his way. He could swear he heard voices, screaming, cries of utter terror, until he realized it wasn't plants he was slaying, or doing the work of a handyman. He was doing the work of God, and he was a ticket to judgment. I give this game a schizophrenic meltdown in the forest out of ten. If this is something you found entertaining, feel free to tell your friends. I just might make more. It's definitely something different for me. So as always, if you have any tips, advice, critiques, or just plain insults, they're welcome in the comments.